Charles Barkley was unstoppable. Like this little fella, who this little fat guy? He can't play. He goes up, boom. I'm like, hey, he's pretty good. And then that fool jumped. I mean, <laughs> but when he jumped, it was like. The money these guys are making today, I'd be damn near anorexic for, <laughs> hey, hey, for, for 35, 40 million dollars a year. They're making 50, 60, Charles. I know, I'd be, they'd be like, we got to get Charles to eat. He's, anore he's anorexic. <laughs> Imagine a prime Charles Barkley in today's NBA and the damage he'll do against today's spacing. Despite being an undersized power forward listed at 6'6", but was really 6'4", Barkley's unique mix of strength, athleticism, and basketball IQ will allow him to thrive in the modern game. His insane rebounding ability was second to none for his size. I honestly think a prime Charles Barkley will average 15 rebounds a game, since smaller guards now are getting even more rebounds because centers are away from the paint more often. A good example is Josh Hart on the New York Knicks, who is listed at 6'4", 216 pounds. He is grabbing an amazing 8 rebounds a game. Now think about what Charles Barkley would do on the glass. His scoring efficiency was insane as well. He shot 54% from the field for his career in a 61 true shooting percentage. He was a one-of-a-kind player. The only person in today's NBA you can compare to Charles Barkley in terms of play style is Zion Williamson. And even then, Barkley just had a certain edge to him and was a way better rebounder and playmaker than Zion. In the modern era, play styles like small ball lineups and switching defenses will make Barkley more effective on both ends of the floor. One thing that would be interesting to see is whether Barkley will improve his three-point shot if he were in today's NBA. So I'm going to show you NBA legends and players explaining why Charles Barkley will be unstoppable in any era. Enjoy the video, man. For that year, he was the best player in the league. He presented a scare to us. They felt like they had a chance and, you know, barring from John Paxson's shot, you know, things could have been totally, totally different. That role of of being uh, Mr. Big Tough Guy all the time, making sure that everybody knew that, you know, when the sons are coming to town, it's, it's a possibility of you getting blown out, getting your butt kicked or whatever. It was. If you was going to war and you was in a foxhole, that's the guy you want with you because you know he's going to give you everything he got while he's out there. Uh, just a guy who got the most out of his ability. And when you paid to see him play, he played hard every night. That's it. Simple. And I want to tell you a story. In 1992, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Ewing, Robinson, Malone, all of us represented the Dream Team. We trained to get ready for to represent the United States. This man was the best player out of all the players. He dominated every single night, every practice. And he was also the most exciting player. So thank you for giving me that honor of playing with you. And I just want to say may God continue to bless you, man. And you've been my partner, my friend, and I look forward to doing more things with you. Congratulations on the Ring of Honor. So we were playing Philly in the playoffs. And I guess I got into a hot rhythm and I had about 40 some points and Charles was yelling, I can hear him yelling in the huddle, so I'm like, who gonna guard this guy? Somebody's gotta guard this guy. That's all right, I guard this guy. So <laughs> I go and then we playing and, and we got into a switch and Charles jumps out and guards me. And yeah, I never known Charles as a, as a defensive <laughs> stopper. So the first thing he does, he breaks down in this defensive position with hands up. All, everything looks technically, technically right. And I just laugh. I say, when in the hell are you going to start playing defense? <laughs> and who taught you how to get in a defensive stance? And I had to pass it. But that's the type of guy he would take on a challenge, even though, even though he was not up to the challenge. He didn't care. And that's just him. Yeah, Charles was interesting. You know, uh, you know a, a really a dear friend of mine still today, you know, when... When we see each other, we always have a great time. And, you know, of course, when we're in the same cities, we do dinner and everything. So, you know, I, I, I love him to death. And, and I owe a lot of my success, I think, in the NBA to Charles. Um, you know, Charles was the, was, the, was the kind of player that, you know, he, he just exude confidence. You know, he knew he was a good player, and, and he demonstrated that every night. And... I, you know, there are 
a couple of, you know, true story is, you know, we're playing against the, uh, we're playing against the Detroit Pistons and, you know, they have Isaiah and Joe Dumars and this is when Dennis Rodman was on the Pistons as well and, you know, they have Bill Lambeer and I just, oh, I have an awful first half, you know, like I'm scoreless, I have zero points, I'm all seven from the field and I'm just playing awful. And coming out the second half, Charles Liddy grabs me by my collar, by my jersey, and grabs me sort of close to him. And then, you know, I can't say exactly what he says, but it's more like, you know, get your crap together. You know, you're too good to be, you know, scoring zero points and, you know, out there playing like, you know, so I'm like, holy crap, you know, what, what's going on? And, you know, that alone to say, you know, I had a, a great second half, but, you know, but he he had faith in me and the confidence that, you know, he knew he was the number one player on the team. And he was like, you know, you're number two. You know, I need you to, to go out there and, and score and be my number two. And, and he made sure every night that I was that I was prepared and ready to play. So I owe a lot to Charles. What made Charles so great is because you always hear the term size doesn't matter. And for Charles Barkley, size did not matter. You know, as a center, center is always 6'10", 6'11", 7 foot. Power four is always 6'8", 6'9", you know, 6'10", not Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley was a solid 6'4", and he didn't care if you were taller, if you were bigger, if you were faster, if you were stronger, he was going to go through it, and nothing could stop this man. And, you know, a guy that played with that tenacity, with that speed, with that force, plus the mentality that he had of not caring, you can tell by some of his interviews, he was going to be hard to stop. Man, the two that stand out to me, every first off, every motherfucker that was supposed to be raw was raw. I pulled I'm, a couple of yours tickets. Man, listen, I got three right off the top. Michael Jordan, Elijah Wan, and Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley was unstoppable at 6'4". You hear what I'm saying what, to what, you? What's Charles Barkley you see? What, where was he at? I, 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 was, uh, I saw, um, damn, uh, man, hold on, I'm, I'm going blank, uh, Houston. He was in Houston? Houston, but he was still facing up off the glass. You one dribble, ha, in the rim, two hand. Then he'll back you down for the whole 14 seconds. Seconds, right. So they started the, you know what I'm saying? Because it started, you know, people going to sleep on it and shit, so they wanted right. to quicken the game up. But Charles Barkley uh, had a motor. I had a real game plan against Chuck, trying to make him shoot that little fadeaway jump shot, if I could get him to turn and just fade away and get, get a hand up and use my length. Because he was just a guy that had a great gift and a great motor for going to the offensive glass and ended up being the MVP when he was down in Phoenix and gets to the finals and just, you know, just got better and better and better. And we had a lot of good battles through our careers. The first time I saw him, you know, it was actually on, on tape the, the night that, you know, uh, Philly drafted him and uh, he was joining Moses Malone, Dr. J, Mo Cheeks, Andrew Tony. So he was joining like a squad. Mm -hmm. And when they, when they actually showed his picture, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, Philly, Philly, Philly may have made a mistake, you know, because, you know, he, he was overweight, you know, he was just, you know, the round mound, you know, and, and, and then when we played against him, it was like, he, he came down and, and, and was taking it behind his back, snatching it off the board, dribbling full court, and then that fool jumped. I mean, <laughs> but when he jumped, it was like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, you, you really had to, like, squish your eyes because you, you hadn't seen anybody, like, this size move like that, but then had, like, like crazy hops. Like, you know, it, it was a different kind of bounce. It wasn't like... It was, it, was, it was crazy. And then, you know, people were saying like he was, you know, 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, and I'm like, no, nah, this dude like 6'4". Maybe, okay, I give him like a, maybe a 6'5", maybe. But he ain't up there with like the 6'7", the 6'8", the 6'9", guys. He's not like that. But watching him jump was, was fascinating because it, it's like he had, I guess the best way I can describe it was like he had, he had two ham hocks for thighs, you know what I mean? He like, it was, he was just like, it, it, I had never seen anything like it. Charles Barkley, this is in 96 when he actually pulled Stefan out to the side after they beat us, actually swept us 
And we were just so eager to be in the playoffs and so happy to be in the playoffs. But he was like, hey, we needed this one. You guys got a million years to be able to get you one. You know, y'all need, y'all got to go through this, this part of it. Every, every uh, great players, every great team has to go through some type of something to be able to get to something. And we were like, I don't want to hear this shit. But he was, he was like grabbing us, like, come here. Like his, his arm is around us, you know what I'm saying? I walked away from my second year very confident and my growth and where I had, where I, and my steps to be who I want to be, right? And what I was trying to be in the league, right? Which was a force to be reckoned with on a consistent night in basis on both ends of the ball, here, here or there. I was shocked that Chuck did that, if I'm being honest. I was shocked that he, you know, he was, he was doing things in the, um, in the series that was just, you know, when he would turn his face, his elbows was high, you know, he was just let, you know, putting the dominance in on some alpha shit, you know what I'm saying? He was just putting, he was putting a dominance in it. And um, I was shocked that he cared enough to pull us to the side and actually give us two cents. He gave us our two cents and, and, and uh, he gave us uh, his advice. And, and I was shocked at that. But there was some brotherly love that I always remembered and I always thanked him for that off the court. Chuck was just different, man. Like, you know, he's small, but man, the things he could do on the floor, you know, most guys have the physical tools and the look that goes with that. But Chuck, he, he didn't have that, but there was just nobody better at creating space to get to their spots. Uh, and then he just had a complete game. He's a great passer. I don't think he gets enough credit for how good a passer he was. And you talk about that, that kill gene, where when it was time, that guy delivered more often than not. And I, I always admired Chuck too, because I, I just never felt like anybody had more fun playing a game than Charles Barkley. One of the great power forwards, particularly at his size of all time. I mean, just dominating, physical, athletic, mentality. He was a joy to watch. I mean, we, we loved Barkley. I wasn't a big Sixers fan, but our man Barkley, he was, you, you watched him, like you knew it was gonna be elite, high level, explosive basketball. Uh, and then he became this incredible personality and a television star, media darling. Uh, and, and to the point now where I, I think if you're not old enough, you don't really uh, understand or appreciate just how good he was as a player. I would say that Charles is the most unique player that ever played basketball. His ability to be six foot four and play power forward, we all know that that's unique. Uh, and he is six four, he's not six five. And his ability to create double teams, I always say there's about four or five guys in the NBA. This is when you know how great you are. Michael Jordan, they said there's an illegal offense rule. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, there was a rule no dunking because of him. Charles Barkley, they were like, you can't back down for more than five seconds. They changed the rule because he was so good. That's when you know that you're on a different level of the playing field, that they're changing a rule just based on your skill set. Holding off Robert Orr. Barkley puts it up. Oh! Charles Barkley! When you look back at his career, you're not going to see many of Charles Barkley type of players, you know, guys of his size who can impact the game. And he was a phenomenal. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And tell me, how many points do you think a prime Charles Barkley will average in today's NBA? And what was your favorite clip from this video? So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time.